the start. So one of the things that happens to traders outside just the issue of knowing whether to be buying or to be selling is that sometimes they got get, get caught up in other people's games. So you just go to a Telegram ch um, channel. I remember when I first started, I was in like so many Telegram groups. At the moment, apart from Simply Pips groups, and then the AQZ group is just there. It's in fact, it's archived. It's just, I go there like once every two weeks or once every three weeks, just gonna check up, okay, what's going on there and all that. But I had to exit all the WhatsApp groups, all the Telegram groups I was in to focus on what I really wanted to do. So usually people get into groups like that and then you suddenly hear, oh, um, dollar is moving, dollar is flying, dollar to the moon. And then you are like, okay, what exactly, where's the dollar to the moon? For instance, someone can look at this particular drop on DXY and then he goes to 15 minutes. Let's go to 15 minutes right here. And says, wow, dollar is crashing, dollar is crashing. And then you suddenly, um, perhaps you are someone that trades on H4 and you come to your H4 and you are like, yes, there is a correction, but dollar is not crashing. But you now get confused. Your whole aim, you saw this before you got into the marketplace and you were planning to buy. But someone has just said, dollar is crashing. And now you don't know what to do any longer. So one of the, um, to address that particular problem, I usually tell traders, you might consider having what I call um, algorithmic systems. Algorithmic systems, which are rules, rule-based systems for taking your trades rule-based systems so that when you come into the marketplace, you know exactly what you want to do. So this morning before, um, to avoid, you know, just staying in the house all the time and just working from home, sometimes I and my wife, we got a shared space, a shared working space and all that. So sometimes about three times, I don't trade on Mondays. I've completely eliminated trading on Mondays from my trading. So Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, which are like my major times when I expect trades, I wish I just go there just to give me a form of, you know, being in the office, like an office setting and all that. And this morning around eight, she just came out. I was like, this, are you not going to show up? And everything. I was like, well, I'll be coming around, but it's not for trading. Today, there is no trade for me. By 8 a.m., I already knew that today, Tuesday, I would not have any trade setups. And as I discuss, you will actually find out why. So today, there will be no trade setups for me. So I am not concerned. Dollar is crashing, dollar is flying, dollar is doing whatever it's doing. I am not bothered. And someone just come and drops, ah, gold, gold to gold is entry half higher. It's not my business. Now, but one of the things that will help you to get to that point is where you have clearly defined rule-based systems of how you approach the market. So to help us with this, I actually came up with, so the EAs I normally create before are like EAs that are always doing something. So they are taking trades or it's following a system and all that. And I decided to take a step back and create a dashboard. And the dashboard is going to look something like this. Sorry, just a moment. So the dashboard looks something like this. So you could just open this and you will see as many as you decide to list here. I don't trade all this. I only trade EU for those of you who are um, the US platform or the current forestry program, you know that. I only trade EU, GU, and EG. I've eliminated, I've, I've become a specialist. EU, GU, EG. Every other thing, I am not interested. So it's just here for demonstration purposes. All these other things you see. This is just, I just trade, this is only words on my screen. Dollar, EU, GU, EG. Every other thing for me here is noise. So, and I will encourage you to do that um, quite early. Find a few things. Don't be trading 28 pairs. 
find seven pairs. If you're like me, find three pairs. Seven, there about, it's okay. You can give you everything you want if you know what you're doing. So you could have a dashboard like this where you just come, look at whatsoever thing you want to trade. So you actually have the opportunity to define the symbols, the currencies you are interested in. All right. And you will have the bias according to what I'm about to explain. So you have your weekly bias. This is what is happening on the weekly time frame. What is happening on the daily time frame? What is happening on the H4 time frame? So usually the weekly time frame is for big position traders. So traders who are looking at a, a minimum of a quarterly, they are, their outlook is quarterly in nature. That's about three months. So they have a three months to four months outlook. So we call them position traders. They will hold their trades for at least a quarter or thereabouts, all things being um, equal. Now, the daily are usually um, long-term or let's like say medium-term swing traders. So if you are trading your weekly setups, like the weekly high and lows, high and low of the week, like that person mentioned, he used to pass um, the prop challenge, you generally fall into this category. So you usually get about two, sometimes three setups if you are lucky in a particular month on a pair. But usually it's basically around two, most times in a month. One, two, occasionally three in a month. So for those people, your time frame you are looking at one week, maximum about 10 days. But usually about a week, you are done with your trades. And then we have the H4 traders, which are um, the short-term intraday traders who are basically looking to get into a position and close out by close of the day, latest two days or thereabouts, they are out of the trade. Now, I'm sharing this so that you know the game you are playing. So if I'm taking my weekly setups and I'm expecting to hold a trade for say about one week, and I'm expecting a move of about one week ATR, which is will be about sometimes 150 pips or thereabouts, you yourself that you are trading intraday and hoping to get 20 pips, 30 pips out of the market, you don't get confused with what I am doing because we are not playing the same game. What we are playing are, we might be trading the same currency, we might be seeing everything the same, but what we are trying to do is not the same. So what we are trying to do is completely different. So how do we come about this bias? I call this market flow. This is one very easy way. If you master what I'm about to show you this night, one very easy way to line yourself up with institutional order flow. One very, very easy way to line up yourself with institutional order flow. So because I basically trade the USD, you see me trading EU, GU, I'm trading it as with reference to whatever the dollar is doing. So um, like I explained, for me, what I'm basically trading is the daily because I'm looking for weekly setups. So the order flow I'm interested in is what is happening on the daily. So my, on the daily, dollar is bullish. So as far as I'm concerned, I am selling EU. I am selling GU. That is the only thing I am looking to do. Every week, as long as the dollar remains bullish, I come into the market week after week looking to sell EU, looking to sell GU. So what am I looking for? High of the week, EU. High of the week, GU. And I want to sell. Now, EG is also bearish on the daily. I come into every week as long as EG remains bearish, as I'm coming into the marketplace, the only thing that is in my head, high of the week, EG sell. High of the week, EG sell. That is the only play I know in the marketplace. No matter what anybody's saying, there is interest rate decision, there is Brexit, Brexit has finished, by the way. There is um, US debt ceiling crisis, uh, the world is about to end. It does not concern me. The only thing I'm interested in doing is sell EU, sell GU, sell EG. And I'll explain how we'll come about this. So if we go to the daily, 
I will just to give show you a bit how powerful this can be. I'll just take you back to sometime last year. All right. So here we've been in an uptrend. If you remember last year, we were in the strong uptrend on USD. All right. Now we are breaking fractal highs. All right. So as we break fractal highs to the upside, that is the symbol. If you remember, higher highs, higher lows. All right. So basically what you are seeing is this is your low. This is your high. Now we've created a higher high. So we are seeing an uptrend. So our fractal highs are like the high points, fractal lows, the low points. So as long as we are breaking fractals to the upside, we are in a bull or in a bullish market. All right. The moment we break a fractal to the downside, as we did here, the moment we break a fractal to the downside, we are bearish until we break a fractal to the upside. It doesn't have to be the last fractal that was formed before, like in this case. All right. So usually I, what people will be looking at is to say, oh, um, before this high, this is the highest high that was formed. This is the fractal low. No, we are not waiting for that fractal low to be broken. We are waiting for the last fractal low to be broken, which is this. Any fractal low, once any fractal low is broken to the downside, we are now bearish. And every move up is an opportunity to sell. Every push up, opportunity to sell. Every push up is an opportunity to sell. Every push up is an opportunity to sell as long as we've not broken any fractal high. And we keep doing that right from October, we moved into a massive sell-off. And then beginning of January, I don't usually trust this. The first two weeks in January, in fact, from the second week after like the 15th, any week in December that has 15th in it, once that week ends, I basically close shop for the year. You will just start seeing consolidation after then. You can check that after, year after year. So we break this to the upside. We are thinking, oh, okay, next week we are going to continue up and then it just break back down. So I just basically fake out. But if you see what I'll be sharing with you this evening, this doesn't concern us because this was the low. All right. And we are looking to trade off the low of the week. So before we get low of the week, they've broken down to the downside. And we are fine. We are still continuing our bearish move. Then comes February and we break this fractal to the upside and we are now bullish. And of course, every move to the downside is an opportunity to buy. Every move, we didn't break this, we must close. That's the break. It's not just a run tree, it's not a week. We must close above it. So here, we didn't break. This was just basically a read of this lose. And we're moving up, moving up, moving up. And then we break through this fractal low right here. And we turn bearish again. The push up is an opportunity to sell. Push up, 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 opportunity to sell. Push up. We read that this low. I was actually thinking you were going to close. Um, I will explain why. Or no, I won't explain why. <laughs> we don't have time for that this night. So I was actually thinking we are going to get a close above this um, because I rather see a build up of orders to the upside on the weekly, but that's story for another day. But as long as we didn't break this fractal low, it was still an opportunity to sell. And then we break this to the upside. And then I think I shared this on the Heroes platform. I shared a chart. I said, if dollar closes as it is today, uh, I think that was about a few, few hours or they're about to the close of the week of the day. And I said, we'll be turning bullish. And of course, we closed above. And then every move to the downside is an opportunity to buy. Move to the downside, opportunity to buy. And again, it's a step moving to the downside. And I am looking to buy again and therefore sell EU and GU. So the market flow is bullish. So if you come to this, you see that the market flow on the daily is bullish. 
Now, if we go to the weekly chart, on the other hand, you will see that we broke the weekly, remember what I said, quarterly, you have quarters in mind, quarters in view. So we broke to the upside here. It doesn't change as much as the daily. We broke to the upside here. And every push down, this whole push down, was just them building orders from people who are willing to sell, push up, push up, push up, push up, push up. And then we break to the downside. Once we break to the downside, we are now bearish and we are looking for opportunities to sell. But you will not have both the capital to hold on or the patience as well to hold on for all this retracement that is happening here to take place. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven weeks of buying before we start selling. So the weekly is just to have it in, at the back of your mind that, okay, this is what the weekly is doing. So that um, if you are going contrary to the weekly, you should know when, um, for instance, USD now is bullish on the daily, but it is bearish on the weekly. We haven't closed above any up factor. So you will begin to look at when will selling pressure begin to come in again into the USD. All right. So when we selling pressure begin to come in, you probably maybe want to look at your other blocks and say, okay, maybe at this other block and all that. For me personally, I am not usually interested in the weekly charts until we get to this top. It is when we get to this top, I'll be interested in it. If we get to this top and they give me a sell on the one hour, I'll be willing to take that sell to the downside. Other than that, I am not usually interested in the weekly chart. I just have it for reference purposes. Now, on the other hand, if you go to the H4, you will see that the H4, it has broken this fractal to the downside. So H4 is bearish. So if I was looking for intraday trades, if I was looking for intraday trades, I will not currently be buying the dollar. Why? On H4, which is the short-term time frame, it is what? It is bearish. Now, if you contrast that with what happened last week, all right? So see what happened last week or from two weeks ago. We are breaking up, breaking up, breaking to the upside. Came into this week, broke to the upside. On Wednesday, we pushed down, but we didn't break any fractal low. These were opportunities, great opportunities to be buying the dollar on an intraday basis. So if you are looking to buy on intraday basis, the way I will usually do this, and for this, I actually trade only EU because it lines up best with the dollar. Uh, occasionally, I play EG as well. So, but this works on virtually every currency. You just have to work out the timings because different currencies, depending on when their main movers are active, have different times when they move so much. So we just come in here. So on Wednesday, for instance, on the dollar, if we go to, uh oh, I've confused my chart. It should be here. All right. So if we go to Wednesday, I don't trade on this. Trade on 30 minutes. So if you go to Wednesday, you could see price creates this on 30 minutes. Lowest bearish candle. So your normal HPLR, low of the day, Asia, takes out Asian low, closes above the lowest bearish candle, price comes back to pick you. Now, um, if we go to EU on that particular day, it was a bit annoying because they gave us this first setup and then I took it and then it just went to go hit my stop loss streaks. All right, they basically gave me one hour or they didn't even give me one hour this first time. No, they didn't give me one hour. They just went straight to go hit my stop loss. And then we got a second close below this bullish candle. And then I took it again and they began to move up but it didn't hit my stop loss. And eventually this moved to the downside. Um, of course, I shared this trade on Friday. 
So usually I don't trade on Fridays, but I was basically trying to um, clear out something on one of my prop accounts, prop challenges I was taking. So I needed to um, take a trade on that Friday. So this was basically the setup. All right. So it gave us close below the high, picked you up, give you one hour. May I have my final hour, three hour. And that was that, give you the three hour and then started running up basically. All right. So that is the way you can easily use your order flow. It's very, very simple. You just need to come in here and look at what was the last factor that was broken. And broken, I mean price closed above or beneath. So if price closed above this fractal or above the last fractal high, we are basically bullish. If price closes below, we are basically bearish. So to make that job easy, you just come to this dashboard. Just, it has been coded into it. Once you just load it up, put in, so let me even just start all over again. I'm just assume a fresh chart and I create this. Give me a fresh chart of EU. And come the, the market flow dashboard. And I just drag it to my screen. All right, so by default, these are the currencies that I have there because uh, apart from AU, I use AU to monitor stocks kind of, so or commodities in general. So EU, GU, EG are things I trade, but um, let's just add more. Market flow. All right, so here I've added a whole lot of other currencies. So you could see all of them just separated by a comma. So the next thing is the look back period because he needs to check how many candles does he need to go back to find out what the other flow is actually is. I advise you to just leave it at 40. And then your update frequency. So this is the frequency attitude to be checking to see whether there is any change in order flow and all that. And also to update whatever thing that is going on in the market. You see what I mean. So once you click on OK. All right. Oh, OK. Yeah, so it has fully loaded. So you see, no need to load a template. No need to do anything. You just load the EA. And basically, this comes out. So this line. Um, just right click onto properties and the line graph change it to none. It could be there, but I just like it to be clean. And you have this like this. So you immediately know at one glance what is happening on the dollar, what is happening on EU, GU, AU, NU. So you don't have to be clicking from charts to charts. Oh, what is happening on this one? What is happening on this? So I can look at gold. Consider gold is bullish on the weekly, but it is bearish on the daily. So if I'm looking for high of the week, low of the week setups on gold, I should be looking for high of the week to sell. Now intra H4 is bullish, meaning that intraday, I should probably not be trying to sell gold. So I'll usually wait for gold to line up again with the daily buyouts and then start looking for opportunities to sell, not that I trade gold. So, but this makes it, so easy. So you have your bias here, and then you have current. So this current basically tells you the current state of this particular thing. So the monthly at the moment, the open of this month is already higher. Where price is at the moment is higher than where it's opened for the month. Where price is at the moment is lower than where it's opened for this week. Where price is at the moment is lower than when it opened for today. So you can immediately look at this dashboard and see where opportunities may lie. So if, for instance, I'm looking to trade um, high of the week, so say on the dollar, I'm trying to buy the dollar, what will I be looking for? I want my week to be bearish, all right? As of the time, um, I want to start looking at dollar. Why? Of course, low of the week means it is lower, all right? It is the low of the week. So the week has opened, price has gone lower. So I'm looking for the week to be bearish and the day to be bearish. That means, oh, okay, keep your eye on the dollar at this point in time. All right, so this dashboard makes it completely easy to do that. And I've showed you how you do your trading. So once we've identified, if you are looking to trade high of the week, um, low of the week setups, 
Of course, we've discussed some ways that you could approach it. The first way is simply to look at price taking out previous days, um, highs or low. So say on the dollar, anytime I'm trading anything USD, I always look at what the dollar is doing first before going to that particular pair. So two weeks ago, we had this trade on USD. So this was Monday's low, right? Monday's low. Remember, we were in a bullish order flow because on the daily, we broke to the upside right here. So this was that day, all right? And then price went below the low of that day. So if we come to H4, you can see that. Again, my own favorite way of doing this, I don't just look at low of the um, previous day's low um, and previous day's high. I actually look for that previous day's low, if I'm going to use it or whatever. I want a fractal low. That's basically what I'm looking for. I want a fractal low to form on H4 within this week. So this is your week. I want this fractal low to form then I want price to go below it. I want this to form. And then I want this to go below it. So basically, if you understand what I'm talking about, you are basically looking for your daily to be what? Bullish, but your H4 will be what? Bearish. Why? Because we would have broken this factor low. What's the idea behind this? For those who trade solely the H4, who don't pay attention to what their higher time frame is doing. They will simply become part of the liquidity at this point. So you are looking to sell on a breakout of this guy, or you've sold somewhere here and you've not taken your profits. You are going to come and take your money. So we are aiming to take the money of these guys who just see bearishness on H4 and think, oh, let's sell. We won't take their money because Trading is really all about taking some people's money. That's what it is. Some people are, everybody is trying to take somebody's money. That so we, is basically- we, we traders go to heaven now. <laughs> <laughs> that is basically all that is happening in the marketplace. So everybody is trying to take somebody's money. So if you understand it from this point, that is the reason why I frame this that way. Even when we use, previous days low and previous days high is because those are the places where some people will put their stop loss. So if the people are looking on H4 and say, oh, H4 is bearish. And then because of that, they want to start selling, no problem. Sell, I'll buy from you. Why? I understand that the higher time frame is superior to lower time frames. The other flow on lower time frames is inferior to the order flow on higher time frames. So, if the time frame on the daily, if the market uh, market flow on the daily is bullish, then I want my H4 to come bearish, and that's and that where this thing also comes into play. So, this already tells me dollar is primed for buying. Right, dollar is primed for buying. So once this happens, I go down to, if it is dollar, if it's a dollar pair, I go down to 30 minutes. If it's any other currency, e.g. and any other currency you might want to trade, I will encourage you to do that on one hour. You can still use 30 minutes just, or 15 minutes, but just expect that it might be more fake outs. So this was dollar. All right, this was that low on four hours. And then price, breaks below it and of course takes previous this low this is the lowest bearish candle price closes above it once price closes above it you're in trouble i'll simply take my fibs we're marking it up that way all right and of course that point, I'll just take this up on the um, 14.30, broker's time. Just go to my MT4, 14.30. I can see this as well on EU. Price broke 
to the downside. I'll just take this and I'll mark it up like this. This high of the week. And then I'll drop the tool I just dropped for you guys um, on the Simply Picks platform, the executioner. I'll just drop it. Oh, I hope I didn't drop the one we password for you guys. <laughs> I was using this to explain something to those in the first stream program, but I hope I didn't drop the one we password. But if I dropped it, this is the password. Just put it in there. So I can determine what will be my risk per trade. All right. So let's say I want to risk $100. So I'm going to leave this like this. So I want to risk $100 per trade. And when I trade, I usually twin trade. As I open two trades at the same time, one targeting TP1 and then the other one targeting my final TP, which is 3R. So once I click this, okay. All right, this will come out. So I have buy market limit stop. So because this is a limit order, price has closed below. It's a sell limit that I want to put. First thing I click on sell. And then I click on limits. So, uh oh, <laughs> price is so far away from here. But basically these three lines would appear on the chart. So let me just drag them all the way up. So they're appearing down like that because that's where price is. It usually appear around five to 10 pips around where price currently is. All right, so I'll just move this red line to where I want my SL to be. And I'll move this blue line to where I want my TP to be. And then I'll move the entry line to where my entry should be. All right, so once that is done, all I need to do is click on execute. So you similarly you open the sell limit. Your SL is there, your TP is here. So let's assume I want to take a second trade immediately. No problem, just execute again. And then once I click on limits, the lines go away and I can just drag one of the TPs to TP1. And there and then I've set my trades and the market comes back up, picks me up, TP1, TP3, I'm out of the trade. And I am done, virtually done for the week on that. All right, so that's, that's that. I would have been that about that. If we go to GU, all right, so 1430, that's that as well. So would have also marked that up. Marked it up just like that. And then price comes to pick us up. TP1 comes to TP2, dances around, goes to TP3. And we are done. So like I was telling some people earlier, um, one of the ways, at least, I don't know for every pair, but I know of the pairs that I trade. So go and do your own back test. On dollar pairs, e.g., usually if the market makers are truly involved in a move, by the time the weekend is coming al al around, that's ending on Friday, you usually be, have already taken all your profits, so have already hit 3R, or you will be really deep in profits. At least you would have taken more than one hour, you'll be more than one hour in profits. So that that way, you don't really get bothered about whatsoever thing is happening at crossover. So that's one of, that's just by the way, just one of the things that I noticed. All right, so we've talked about how to take high of the week, low of the week kind of setups using the order flow. Now, what about intraday setups? Now for intraday setups, remember what we said, we want, um, now, the second uh, warning before I move to intraday setups, a warning I need to give you is this. Now, remember one of the things we are trying to do 
um, is to come and take the liquidity that is resting here and then begin to move up. So if price goes up first and then begins to come down and comes down to take the slow, I would advise you to ignore that separate. You can go and do your back test and see whether what I say is true or not. I advise you to just ignore that setup. So take setups that just come and do this and go. Don't, once it goes like this and then comes like this, just ignore it. So that's something you can check again. All right, so when we want to do intraday uh, kind of setups, what I just said now also comes into play. So if we are looking to buy, if we are looking to buy, um, I will again advise you just ignore Mondays. Mondays do a lot of crazy stuff. So sometimes they use Mondays to set up the sell for or the buy, the weekly buy for Tuesday or Wednesday. So um, you might just get caught up in that. So I'll just encourage you leave out Monday. At least if you are trading USD, I don't know what happens. If you are trading USD, if you are trading EG, just forget about Mondays. Just leave Mondays alone. Occasionally it will work. Well, a lot of times you will have heartbreak. So every other day, what would we want? We want to see a Shian low taken and then begin to move to the upside. Occasionally, they'll just give all these breakouts like this. If you have a strategy that you can trade this, no problem. But right now, the only way I trade this is just intraday setups. So for those who trade something like AQZ, this might be a way to look at that. So this breaks above. All right, these are your reference candles. Breaks above, you're looking for a retest and you're moving. So that might just be a way to trade it. Fridays again, it's like Monday, avoid it for intraday trading. A lot of times, only if you must, only if you must, that's the only time you should consider trading on Fridays. Most times, you just do a lot of rubbish. So intraday, I've shown this trade before. H4 is bullish, D1 is bullish, take your trade. Asian low, take Asian low. Lowest candle, bearish candle, close above it, set your limits, all right, and take your trade on EU. If you go to GU, GU didn't come to pick, and GU does a lot of that a lot of times, which is why I don't take it for intraday setups. I don't look at it for intraday setups. So that's basically very simple way of looking at the market just coming from other flu. If we look at EG, let me just talk about EG quickly. So if we look at our dashboard on EG, we see that EG is bearish right through. These are the kind of ones that I like, but sometimes if they last for too long, um, we don't have time in this particular Zoom for me to talk so much about money flow, uh, but I'll just try and touch on it and then close off. I don't want this to be too long. So um, bearish, bearish, bearish. Everywhere is bearish. So we are just selling. And we'll come to daily. We'll see where that happened. EG. So EG, if you understand how Euro and GBP are correlated, EG tends to be in a range more of the time. So you will see a lot of breaking, unbreaking, breaking, and unbreaking. But I can tell you that a lot of inside is breaking and unbreaking, you usually get your weekly setups. You will usually get your weekly setups. So a good example was this. So usually to give you about one, like I said, one or two setups every month, you should be content with that weekly setups. So we broke to the downside here. This was on the 28th of April. So every push to the upside is an opportunity to sell. So if we go to H4, EG, so what do we see? So we broke to the downside, 28th of April. Then we opened the week here. This was the high, fractal high created within the week. All right, let me expand this. So this was the fractal high created within the week price broke it to the upside. Once price breaks it to the upside, we begin to look for opportunities to sell. So this was on the 2nd of May. So we'll go to H1. Remember I said, that's the way I trade mine. 
So EG, I'm hoping that somehow, somehow, EG will just miraculously come back up here. If it doesn't happen, I don't have any business with EG the rest of the week. So until EG comes back to take this guy out, I don't have any business with EG this week. So that's one of the ways you can just make your trading very, very simple. You don't always have to be looking at your screen. All right, so this was the second of May. So this was the highest bullish candle. This was the Monday's fractal. This was the fractal that was created on Monday. Price breaks above it. This is the highest bullish candle. It doesn't close beneath and goes up all the way. No problem, we wait. And then come the following day, uh, usually for EG, I will not start trading. In fact, generally for all my trading, I don't take any trades outside the European session, outside the European and London session. So once London closes, I close my laptop, we call it a day. If they create any setup during New York and I feel like taking it, I'll come and take it the following day. All right, so this is still basically Asia. I'm not gonna to touch it. And then they create this new high. Close beneath it. This is the highest bullish candle. They close beneath it. I take, I trade. So you could see that. And boom, 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 boom. So again, you can see what I was talking about. By the time you are getting to Friday, this is Wednesday. But by the time you are getting to Friday, if they are really in the move, by the time you are getting to Friday, you are virtually, either you have hit your full TP or you are deep in profit. So one of the ways to just know that, see, they are not, I'm, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. This trade keeps dragging for days and it's getting to the end of the week. And you are still virtually at break even. They are likely not behind that move. So since then, we've not gotten any other new trades. We've just been playing around, dancing in this place. So we got this, unfortunately, no, we didn't get a fractal. This was the fractal that we got that week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay, so we got, this was the fractal. This was this fractal, this one you're seeing here is actually from this. So we got this. I was hoping that they will come break above it and then begin to go to the downside. They didn't do that. And so we've not gotten any other thing on on this end um one final one just so that it doesn't look like uh oh that is enough this is already past nine so the we have a second dashboard i'll just touch on it because i just sent this to the heroes platform and i'm sure they are here we wanted to have this solely for the heroes platform before but we decided okay let's just straight open to the whole house so the money flow basically tracks what the big money is doing in the market. So there are times when, oh, we don't have time. There are times when- Yeah, Prof, money flow, we have to do it another day. Yeah, like we have I said, we have another. four days. And um, yeah, and in fact, today, today I feel you've given us so much that- um, <laughs> You, you can't know, digest yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, prof, some of us, we struggle to pass secondary school ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, for those in the Heroes platform, I think all the all the years I dropped, I dropped a video with them. So you push, you can watch the video. By the time we have it with General House, if you have any questions, you can actually drop it, and then you can still drop it in our normal chat. For those of you who are messaging me, please drop the questions in our general in the Heroes chat, so that I I won't be answering. Um, not A will come and ask the same question that B is asking and C is asking, please. So just drop the questions there. We'll answer it together. So, um, Bishop, I think you can take over. Yeah, we want to appreciate Prof. Um, for some of you that are a bit lost, Prof is a, is a mathematician and strategist. So I appreciate the fact that um, he might have said some things that have gone over our head because some of you might not have understood some of the things he was saying because um, you didn't start the procedure of us from scratch. So what I will do is that I'll take tomorrow and maybe part of Wednesday 
Uh, okay, tomorrow is Wednesday. Um, um, tomorrow we will strictly want to have another meeting for nine. So tomorrow we'll start at eight on the dot, irrespective of who is online. And then um, part of Thursday, I will explain the basic concepts surrounding most of our strategies, the basic concept. Like when we say fractal, what is it? When we say fractal is taken, what, what does it mean? We'll look at um, um, all of that. Some of you are still pretty new, so we'll look at limits too. And once that is done, um, we'll have Prof come back again and re-explain um, one of the concepts of today. I think on that day, he might now take money flow. For those of us who love intraday strategies, I'll be introducing us to two intraday strategies that um, will be useful if um, you have time to sit in front of your chat. If you notice what we're doing now, we're trying to reduce our screen time. So you could have something, you could have better things, or you could have time to do other things uh, um, in your life. So we'll come back again tomorrow by 8 p.m. and I'll look at the concept. But Prof, for the sure. purpose of um, for the purpose of the fact that we invited everyone in the group, can we have? I know you you've dropped the video you dropped in the group is for the dashboard, right? No, it's the one I dropped in the general group. It's just for the executioner. I All dropped right, so the executioner and then the video for it. Yeah, so like I was saying now, so many things have been discussed today. So we have the executioner and um, we need to explain why do we need the executioner for most people who are pretty new. Why do you need to position size? We might explain that um, maybe on maybe next week, something like that. Um, but this dashboard, is there a way you can let the group have it? Even if it's a, a month's license, let's just touch it. All right, I think I'll just drop it. Um, so any person who wants the, what's it called? The dashboard, just go to the Simply Pips General Group and just write dashboard. Just write dashboard. I would send the dashboard to you. Once, just write dashboard. Don't write anything more than that. Just type dashboard. I will send the dashboard to you. So once you receive it, you have, a, should I give one month now or two months a license? <laughs> it, can, it can be two months. It can be two okay. months. So you will have a two month license to use the dashboard. So you have this dashboard for two months so that you can see how it works, use it for a while, get acquainted with it and all that. And I promise when you want to buy it, it won't be expensive. Uh, it's not going to be expensive. Okay. Yeah, so so guys, um, let's put a T in the chat box to thank Prof for it took it took a lot of time to create that dashboard. Um let's just thank him for that. So again, so that we don't make let me um prof, I think you can stop recording from your end. So we don't make